call to worship is taken from Psalm 22, reading verses 23 and 24. You who fear the Lord, praise Him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor Him. Revere Him, all you descendants of Israel, for He has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden His face from Him, but has listened to His cry for help. Good morning everyone and this is John all the way from Johannesburg and I wish to welcome you to our service this morning and I trust and pray that God will really bless you and that he will hold you tightly and that you will just take something from our worship service today. So sit back, relax and just journey with me as we praise the Lord and we come still at Almighty God's feet. So come, let us commence our service. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious, almighty, heavenly Father, O oh Lord, we greet you as we've come into your presence this morning, Lord, praising you and worshiping you, Lord. O oh Lord, as we come with our prayers, Lord, we want to proclaim your majesty as we approach your eternal throne. We want to proclaim that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And it is to you that we bend our heads and bend our knees. Because you are our God. You are our Father. And it is you that we praise today. But Lord, as we come, we know, Lord, that we have to confess our sins. Because it was you, Lord, that said that you love the sinner but hate sin. And that you cannot be in the same place as sin. And therefore, Lord, we need to confess. In a week gone by, we have not loved as we ought to have. We did not care for one another. And we just continued our own lonely little lives, not even thinking of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in our silence now, we just want to offer our personal and individual confessions to you. O oh Lord, hear our hearts now as we bring our personal and individual confessions. O oh dear Lord God, you have promised us that if we do repent, you will forgive us, Lord, and turn from our wicked ways. And yes, Lord, we want to do that. And with your help, Lord, we know that we can turn from our wicked ways. Lord, we praise you and we thank you that through Jesus Christ, we are able to atone for our sins and that you do forgive us, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you for that. Oh, Lord, we pray your blessing on our service today and we pray that you will hold each and every one of us tightly and that you will just open our minds so that we can hear you so lord we pray your blessing in jesus name amen our lesson today comes from genesis chapter 17 and i'm reading the first seven verses when abram was 99 years old the lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. So let us prepare ourselves to receive God's message or his teaching. 
come. Let us ask him to give us the wisdom to understand what it is that his word is saying to us and what he wants to teach us. Come, let us pray. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, oh, Lord, we come this morning to seek that encounter with you, to seek you face to face, to look you in the eye, and to hear what it is that you want to say to us. Oh, Lord, as we come, we want to pray that you will just open our hearts and minds so that we may be receptive to your word, that we can hear everything you want to teach us. Oh Lord, we become so distracted so quickly. So we want to ask that you will just help us to focus. Focus on you and just look at you fully in your eyes. Oh Lord, help us to be like sponges so that we can absorb everything you want to say. Help us to put that into practice. O oh Lord, as I bring your message to these, your people, I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you will use me, that you will communicate through me so that the people may hear you. I pray that all the words and the meditations that flow from my lips will be yours and that they will bring you honor and glory at all times. O oh Lord, hold each and every one of us very tightly so that we can hear and learn from you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, today is the second Sunday of Lent and we are fast approaching our Holy Week and we are fast approaching Easter Sunday which is the climax of of Holy Week but we're in a period which I believe is very very important on the Christian calendar and it's a time when we are called to rededicate our lives and to commit our ways to Almighty God now I've heard many debates and many arguments from people and I say to people when last have you committed your life to Almighty God? When last have you taken that step in saying, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. And once again, I rededicate my life to you. And you know, somehow, there seems to be a misnomer about this. People are of the conviction that we have to be perfect before we come to God, before we come to Jesus and commit our lives to Him. Somehow we believe that we have to be without sin, we have to be without any transgressions before we can approach Almighty God. And I want to say to you that that truly is a misnomer. Because in our own strength, we can never be without sin. We can never be without pain. We can never be the perfect person. Because there is no such thing as a perfect person. The only perfect person was once and is only Jesus Christ. And then you say to me, you know, John, I, I'm a sinner. I cannot do this. And I do not do enough things for the church. And I do not do enough things for people. I'm too busy at work to get caught up in things like Christianity. I want to say to you that it's not about what you do. It's not about who you are. And I want to tell you this morning the, a brief story of our text today. I want to do a teaching on that. And I want us to have a look at when God appeared to Abraham. 
and he made a covenant with him. And I want to refer you back to the text we had today in Genesis 17, reading verses 1 to 7. I want us just to be very clear on this. When, when God approaches Abraham, remember at that stage his name was Abram, and it's God that gave him and changed his name. But when he, when he approaches him, he says to him, Abram, I am Almighty God. In other words, when he introduces himself, he doesn't just say, I'm God. He says, I'm Almighty God. And the Greek words that are used here is El Shaddai, which means God Almighty. And that comes from the ancient text. In the old days, they believed that God's name was El. And then Shaddai is God, which incidentally got very confused with a pagan ritual of El, which was a totally different God. And therefore you will find that the correct Hebrew for Almighty God is Elohim and not El. But El Shaddai means God Almighty. But if you take that, it is all defined from the word Shadda, which means God All-Sufficient. Which just reminds me of our sermon we had about two to three weeks ago when Amberly spoke and said that God is enough. Because that means God all sufficient and means I am the God who pours out blessings. I am the God that is enough for you because I provide everything you need. So you see, when he approaches Abraham, he says to him, I am El Shaddai, I am God Almighty, and it is me that is talking to you. Abram responds in a manner showing his humility and he falls down flat on his face. It is then that God reaches out to him. This divine God reaches out to Abraham. Now what is what is so important about this? And the great importance, and I want you to remember this, that it is God that takes the initiative here. It is God that reaches out to Abraham and says to him, I am almighty God. Abraham didn't come here and say, God, God, where are you? God, where are you? No, God reaches out to Abraham and he says, I am almighty God. And Abraham responds. In other words, the initiative, the beginning comes from God and he reaches out to us. And he says something very beautiful to Abraham. He says to him, walk before me faithfully and be blameless. In other words, if you walk before me faithfully, and blamelessly, I will make a covenant with you. Now remember the covenant I said to you quite a few times. A covenant is like an agreement. An agreement that God will be Abraham's God. And he will be the God of all Abraham's descendants and their descendants. And he promises Abraham that he will be the father of all nations. In other words, he is our God as well because we are all descendants of Abraham. And he makes a promise here and he says, if you walk before me faithfully, why walk before me? Because God is a God that is practical. Remember I said not practical? practical a God who intervenes and a God who is very present in each and every person's life because he wants to be part of our life so he is the one that has come to make an agreement with each and every person an agreement saying that he will be our God and he is almighty God and that is so relevant for 
for our period of Lent that we are in, that we remember that we're in Lent and that we have our God to take us through this time. And it is through our God who takes the initiative to establish this covenant so that we can go through life. But more than that, what happens here? It is not the consequence of any human action. It is not the consequence of anything done by humankind. But it is an, a display of God's character. He shows his grace towards humanity. God's grace towards humanity reveals a profound truth about the essence of God's character. And that essence of his character is love. God's grace and consequent involvement in the daily lives of people is driven by his unconditional love for each and every person. Folks, you see, it's not about what I do. It's not about what I am. But it's about how I respond to this love that God gives each and every one of us. And it's through His grace, His love, that He reaches out to each and every one of us. And He shows His grace and mercy to each and every one of us day in and day out because day in and day out we sin and we wander away from him and on a Sunday we get back together and we ask for forgiveness and how does God respond he doesn't turn his back on us every time he forgives us and he is reconciled to us again and again and again so you see, our relationship with God, God's grace, His mercy, is not earned. There's nothing we can do to earn that grace. It is not achieved. In other words, it's not how active I am in the church. It's not about what I do for people. It's not about what I give to people and how people see me in the community. It's not about that at all. I know a lot of people go out and they do things to be seen. For example, I don't know if you've seen on Facebook, there's this man that does good to everybody. But when he does good, he video records everything. And then he puts this video call onto Facebook so that the whole world can see what he's doing. The scriptures say to us, your left hand must not know what your right hand is doing. In other words... When we do these things, our motivation is not to be seen or to try and achieve something in society. But when we do it, we respond in love. So no matter what we do, we cannot earn God's grace and we cannot achieve in reaching God's grace. It is just by responding to His love What's so wonderful is that God provides each person with the assurance of God's ever available grace and mercy. And that we see day in and day out. But he does call us. He does call us to walk before him so that he can be with us. He calls us to be blameless. And we can never be blameless. And that's where you may come to me and say, John, that's my problem. I can never be blameless. But you see, this is where Jesus comes in. And this is where Jesus went to the cross for us. And he died and he was resurrected. And every time we commit ourselves to Jesus Christ, we die to ourselves. And we are resurrected in Jesus I want you to listen very carefully. When we are reborn, we are resurrected, we become a new creation 
in Jesus. So whenever God looks at us, he sees us in Jesus. And because Jesus is blameless, we are then seen as blameless. So folks, you see, if we do not dedicate our lives to Jesus, and if we don't receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we can never be in Jesus. We have to receive him and accept him. Because when Jesus does look down or looks up to God and God looks down on Jesus and we are not in Jesus, what does God see? He sees the person that is full of blame and full of sin. So you see, folks, what I'm saying to you as we celebrate this Lent, it is only in Jesus who came and made a new covenant with us. That new covenant of forgiveness and being resurrected anew in Jesus. You see, the Protestant understanding of sanctification is not being without blame, but rather that sanctification is being set apart for Jesus and in Jesus and through Jesus. Can I repeat that? In other words, when we are sanctified, when we are made holy, we are not without blame, but we are set apart in Jesus. We are set apart for Jesus and we are resurrected in Jesus. So we set apart we are in Jesus, for Jesus, through Jesus. And how are we set apart through Jesus? We are set apart through his death and resurrection upon the cross. Folks, that's a mouthful I gave you now. It's very technical, I agree. And that is why we shouldn't venture into the fourth dimension, but rather trust like a little one is what Jesus calls us to trust. That we become part of that covenant that Jesus has established for us. Exactly the same way as what God did with Abraham. You know what? God even gives us status. He gives us status when we are in him. Because he changes Sarah name before God makes the covenant with Abraham Sarah was known as Sarai Sarai means the lady or the princess of a specific person in other words Sarai means that she was the personal property of Abraham but then God changes her name to Sarah and Sarah indicates our highest standing and status than Sarai now Sarah implies more generally a lady or a princess which is acknowledged acknowledged not only by Abraham but the whole community and the whole of society and obviously in the eyes of God Folks, in this time of Lent, I want us to have a look and stop looking for excuses why we should not commit to Jesus Christ. But rather let us see and understand what Jesus did for us in establishing that new covenant with us. And that let us see how that changes our lives. My challenge to you is that you will rededicate your life to Jesus. And when I pray in a little while, I'm going to pray that you will all, that we all rededicate our lives to Jesus. And that we receive him as our Lord and Savior today. Not later when I'm ready. Today, the sinner as 
we all are. To close off, remember Jesus came for the sinner. So he came for you and he came for me so that we can be part of his wonderful family. Be part and set aside for him. Amen. Come let us pray. Come let us thank the Lord for speaking to us. Oh dear Lord God, we've heard your word to us this morning, Lord. We've heard how you have come and you have made a covenant with us. And Lord, we've also heard how we must commit to you, Lord, but we are so scared. Because we feel inferior and we feel that we are not worthy, worthy of you because you are such a great God and a God that loves but Lord, we don't understand that it's all about your love to us. Not about our love to you, but your love to us that initiated this whole process. Oh Lord, please help us to commit to you. And as I pray this morning, Lord, I pray that you will just hear our prayers as we rededicate our lives to you. Oh dear Lord Jesus, today we proclaim you to be our Lord and our Savior. And we pray that you will forgive us for all our sins. And once again, Lord, we rededicate our lives to you so that we can walk before you. And when you look at us, you see us in Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Oh, Holy Spirit, when we go wrong and when we transgress, we pray that you will just convict us of each and every time when we go astray. And that you will just hem us back in once again. Lord, help us through this time of Lent. Help us to go through the, the suffering of life, the, go past the suffering of sin, so that truly we may just bask in the radiance of your wonderful grace and salvation and know that we are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ as we commit our ways to you once again oh lord jesus we praise you and we thank you we thank you that you take an interest in us almighty god as we come to you we praise you that you love us we praise you because you are worthy of our praise we bless you for everything you do for us for protecting us for guiding us, and for being with us day in and day out. And this we pray in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us here now today and forevermore. Amen. Folks, our time together has come to an end yet again. May I wish you God's richest blessing for the week that lays ahead and may you just have a wonderful time as you bask in the radiance of of the mercy and grace and salvation of Jesus Christ our Lord. So until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, and always remember that Jesus is waiting for your prayer. Goodbye now. <music>